Hey everybody, welcome back to AIT 2101. This is the second lecture in a series of vibration analysis lectures. Uh, the first one we talked about what vibration really was, and it's basically the oscillation or the moving back and forth of a mass, typically on our machine, uh, that creates a vibration. And we talked about the, the uh, four forces of vibration, the excitation, and the, the other three that oppose it. Now, hopefully you're taking notes as we get ready to roll into this second lecture. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into what vibration is and how it impacts the machine. And you look, you get, we're going to keep diving deeper and deeper into the science of it. And I hope you'll uh, find it fascinating and, and, uh, and informative as well. So let's go ahead and move forward with vibration analysis, part, please, part two. Uh, so we've got a vibration in our machine. Big deal. Okay, what, what are we going to do with that? All right, what does that mean to us? Well, right now it doesn't mean a whole lot other than we know that it's shaking or moving. Sometimes we may not know it's shaking or moving because the vibration can be so small. So what we're, um, <clears throat> so what are we going to do here? Well, vibration, when, I can tell you this, that when a, vi a machine vibrates, it means that something is being damaged, okay? And, and again, it may not appear so on the surface, but trust me, there is damage going on whenever there is vibration set up in a machine to the entire machine or maybe just one of its components, okay? And this example right here, we've got a fan wheel that's on typically uh, on, on a blower, an uh, industrial blower, and this red blade, uh, red blade right here indicates a heavy spot, okay? We talked earlier in the first video about your car tire having a heavy spot and creating a vibration as you go down the road. You feel it in the suspension and sometimes in the steering uh, of your car. Well, this industrial uh, blower fan here, it's got a heavy spot. You can see the shaft oscillating back and forth. We're not talking about rotation right now. We're talking about the impact it's having on that shaft. And you'll notice that it's moving and oscillating back and forth, up and down on this axis right there, the vertical axis. So, uh, with that set up, uh, you know, you're creating some additional stresses there on the bearings and things. Okay, and using another example, it's the turbine engine, uh, or turbine out of an in turbine engine. And um, these, it's got a heavy spot, okay, it's, got, it's not balanced, okay, it's got an imbalance. And what, as you can see, this red line is flexing with that center shaft there. And all of that flexing is setting up stresses and creating stresses in that shaft to it. Uh, and then at some point, it will fail and uh, fail catastrophically as well. Uh, I have a um, little sample here. Uh, this is actually off of a fan shaft uh, from a plant that I worked in. And this is before the machine was set up on our vibration analysis routes. And uh, what happened, we had a stress fracture because we had an imbalance on the fan wheel. And the fan wheel was, like I said, just, it was causing the, sh the, the shiv out here on, on this end, it was about here, and it was causing it to flex like this. And it set up a little stress fracture, a little small hairline stress fracture right here in the keyway. And as it continued to flex, over and over, it eventually it kept separating, separating until we finally got to the point of catastrophic failure. If you come in the lab for the for the mandatory lab, I'll show you this again. I'll show you exactly where uh, she let go and took off. Okay. So my point is, is that you got some vibration. Okay. Don't think that much about it, but know this: at some point, it's going to catch up with you. Okay. It's going to catch up with the machine, and it's going to fail fail in a big way. Now, in these lectures, I'm going to be talking a lot about fans because imbalance is probably the, one of the biggest uh, sources of vibration. We'll talk about others, but for, for um, these lecture purposes, the industrial blower that we're going to be using um, looks a lot like this. And just for those of you who have never been around these before in, in plants, um, you got a large uh, three-phase AC motor right here, uh, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 horsepower or so, just based on the look here. And it's got a shiv or a, a big pulley uh, that drives a series of belts and on the other end of the shaft of this blower is another shiv and it's turning a blower, it's turning a shaft that's got the blower housed inside here. We'll be using this and referencing this over and over uh, as we go uh, through the lectures, but I'll just give you a visual representation. And what happens is we, you know, we talked about that heavy spot on that fan wheel, okay? So here's what happened, this is the representation of the fan wheel. The uh, fan wheel right here, and here are the bearings that are suspending the shaft that's holding that fan on one end, and this is the pulley that is uh, mounted to the other end of the shaft as the belts are driving. Okay, so this is basically the assembly we've got here, and all of that, all of that imbalance that we saw on that wheel is occurring right here, and it's setting up a lot of stress and pressures on uh, the bearings themselves. Okay, and these are these are what we call 
typically uh, call a pillow block bearing. Got a couple of rollers in here, but they the, those bearings are suspending and, and, and supporting all of the load uh, and the rotational forces and everything that's going on with this fan. Unit, okay, and we're not going to we're not going to uh, get real heavy into the bearings and the different types. We are going to talk about them as far as the, as far as uh, defects and, and vibration frequencies and things like that. But we don't we can't possibly cover all the bearings and. And, uh, in this particular class, but this is a, a double row bearing right here and a pillow block bearing, and these are the rolling elements. And these rolling elements riding inside the uh, outer race and the inner race, in between the outer race and the inner race, they are suspending or carrying all of the load and all of the forces that are exerted uh, as a result of that fan wheel being out of balance. Okay, so how much force are we talking about here? Okay, well, because you know, like I said. Um, What's, in, what, what's vibrating a lot to me may not be vibrating a lot to someone else. So, uh, and you, you talk about small and skip weights as far as imbalance, well, what kind of impact does that have on us? And what kind of impact does it have on the, on the components like the bearings, okay? Well, we can, there's a formula for that. And we can measure that in force, uh, in the force as far as foot pounds goes, okay? And the formula goes a little bit like, like this. 1.77, that's fixed number, okay? That's a constant. We take the RPM in which the shaft is moving, okay? Take the RPM in which this shaft right here is moving, okay? And we divide that by 1,000 and we square it. Then we multiply it by the number of ounces that it's out of balance, okay? All right? And then how far from the center line of the shaft on that fan, how, so, how far from this center line out is that 4 ounces, okay? So again, RPM is our shaft speed. Ounces is the number of ounces of imbalance that we're that we have going on with the fan wheel, and the number of uh, inches from the center line shaft. Let's kind of put this all together, okay? And we're just going to use four four ounces. It sounds like nothing, okay? So we take four ounces, and we are going to let's let's just say we decided to uh, weld a weld a four ounce nut to the end of the this impeller blade. Makes no sense, I know, but just give us four ounces out here. And we do it 12 inches from the center line of the shaft. Okay, four ounces doesn't sound like that much, but if we go back to our formula, it'll, it'll give us an idea how much additional force is being applied to those bearings into that shaft. Okay, and so we we have the fixed uh, 1.77, 1800 RPMs. That's typical of a, a three-phase electric motor used in the industry. Uh, most all of them run 1800 RPM. So. Take that 1800 RPM divided by 1000 squared, we come up with 3.24, okay? And then we multiply that by our four ounces and 12 inches from the center line of the shaft. We wind up with an additional 275 pounds of force being applied to that machine. That sounds like a whole lot from four ounces, but when you start slinging it at 1800 RPMs and you're, you're 12 inches from the center line of your shaft, that creates almost a, there's a good sized football player hanging out there on the end of that uh, fan wheel. Okay, it's 275 pounds is a lot of force. Now that's not 275 pounds being applied to the fan or the, the fan bearings. That's 275 additional pounds in addition to what it's already holding right here, it's, uh, it's supporting and carrying. So, that, so that's 275 pounds. Now watch this though. Uh, suppose and, and this slide shows us that it's going to give that deflection. I like this slide because if you look, look at the force, the amount of force being applied right here on this edge of this bearing right here, as opposed to up here, okay, and right here, these two points right here are carrying the brunt of that deflection and they're opposite on this. So we've got, we've got a deflection, we are setting up stress fractures or the possibility of stress fra fractures in our, uh, in our shaft and in our bearings. So now let's, here's what let's do. Let's take our RPM and let's double that speed, okay? Now, 275, uh, RP, uh, 275 pounds was created when we uh, were running at 1,800 RPMs. What if we double the speed of our shaft, okay, or the fan shaft? All right, still, the formula stays the same, only now 3,600 divided by 1,000 squared gives us 12.96. We still have only 4 ounces of weight, and we're still only 12 inches from the center line of the shaft. So, the only thing that's changed is we've taken speed of that shaft and double it, okay? And we have created 1,100 pounds 
of additional force that the machine is now having to suspend. The bearings are being subjected to 1,100 pound, additional pounds of stress and force, as is the uh, shaft as well. Okay, so you can kind of see just four ounces of being out of, out of balance there is going to really set up, a, you know, almost a, a surefire catastrophic failure. So again, we're, we're subjecting our bearings and our shaft to all that additional load. And uh, we can do this and we can reduce this by making sure that our, our, uh, our machines are balanced properly and we can tell if they're in or out of you know, tolerances with vibration analysis. Now, one of the first things that will go on a bearing, uh, for example, in, in this situ situation, one of the first things that will go is we'll damage the seals of the bearing. Okay, if you look right here, See, it's going to be hard for you to see, but there are seals right in here, okay? And these seals keep contaminants out, and they keep lubrication in, okay? So one of the first things we'll go is, as a result of that shaft out there moving like that, is we are going to damage our seals, the lubrication is going to escape, uh, we will probably run the bearing dry, and if we don't, then we're also allowing contamination in. So now dirt and uh, other contaminants ingress into the grease, it gets there and starts grinding away on the balls and the races of our bearings. So we just sit, we're setting up a whole host of, uh, of failure points for our machine. Okay. Um, also, as we talked about, we're, going, we're looking at stress fractures in the shaft itself by, by that flexing, that constant flexing, bending back and forth. Okay. And then there's also collateral damage. Now, I told you, uh, I showed you that uh, that shaft that broke. Uh, that came apart from uh, one of the plants that I worked at. Uh, we were very fortunate, um, and I want to go back to this example here. Uh, we were very fortunate. This shaft right here started f uh, flexing as a result of imbalance, okay, and set up that stress fracture, like I said, and that crack, and eventually it took off. And when I, so when I say took off, I literally mean it took off. It, that the uh, shiv uh, and what was left of that shaft weighed approximately uh, 175 pounds, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. My memory serves me. It's about 175 pounds, and it's running at about 1,800 RPM. And as soon as she let go, this guard was no match for that mass that went flying out the end of this guard. Now, it, to make matters worse, it was up about 30 feet up in the air. Now, fortunately, it was in the back end of a building, and there was no one around it, you know, sort of out of, out of sight, out of mind, and which is sort of how it came to fail to begin with, but um, or how we didn't know about it. But uh, what happened is it shot out the end of this guard and flew out the side of the building. Okay, fortunately, no one was hurt. It's it's a miracle, but like I said, it was in the back of the building, and we we're very fortunate. So my point is this: we, is not only do you damage the machine, the collateral damage that you uh, can incur too is just as bad. You know, we we lost the housing, we lost the fan wheel, um, the, the belt guard, we lost everything. We had damage to the building. Okay, and we had potential loss of life. So that's critical. So vibration analysis is a lot more than just saying how much is this machine vibrating and you know, what are we going to do with it, what are we going to do about it, okay? The impact is pretty broad reaching, okay? And again, of course, we talked about bearing damage. That's the, the bearing is what suspends and carries the load of that, of that machine. So when we damage the bearings, you know, it's going to shut the machine down and, and let's take a bunch of other things out with it if we don't catch it soon enough, which is the basis of vibration analysis. We want to be able to predict when a machine is failing based on the vibration that it is emitting. And we do that with uh, several different instruments that we're going to be uh, covering as well. But uh, this is just a sample or example of a, of a, a bearing that, that got uh, just got a little bit too stressed, okay? So again, like I said, we're going to break these videos, uh, lecture uh, videos, into smaller chunks. So that's the end of the second one. Uh, again, if you uh, need to talk to me about anything, if you don't understand anything with this formula or something like that, get a hold of me and we'll, I'll work with you one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, other than that, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're kind of starting to get something and out of it, kind of maybe start to see the picture we're going to uh, try to paint with this. And other than that, uh, thanks for watching and uh, be sure to tune, tune into the third one. Thanks a lot.